Welcome again to our live broadcast. And um, just on behalf of Reverend and the whole team, I want to say thank you for always tuning in and coming on. We are grateful. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate your support and your encouragement. And um, we are humbled that these little nuggets have been a blessing to you. And for some, it is actually introducing you to a walk with Jesus. And I think that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. And uh, I want to encourage all of us, you know, when you hear any of these messages and you know somebody who also could be blessed by it, forward it to them, send it to them. And that is why every time we come online, we encourage you, you know, that share the live broadcast, have a watch party, you know, if you're on YouTube, share it, share it. You never know who needs this specific word at this specific time. Let's not just enjoy it or receive it or benefit from it alone, but let others also be affected by you. And um, Reverend and I continue to stand with you in prayer for your household. And one of the things that we hope to do in the very near future is to be able to come to you, just spend time answering questions or things that you would like to know more about. So if there's anything you would want to talk, us to talk about or discuss or, you know, shed more light on, please send a message on Facebook or email, any medium, just send it to us and we'll definitely reach out and um, deal with it. So once again, we are in the presence of God and uh, Father, we thank you today and we ask that your presence will be with us speak to us holy spirit we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you have your way in our mess in jesus name the bible says in ephesians 1 17 the last bit of it and then into 90 it says that asking god the glorious father of our lord jesus christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power. Amen. I want us to just spend a bit of time praying that, you know, we will continue to grow in Him. We also want to pray that we will have a, an understanding of the times and the season. So many people are confused in this season, but the Spirit of God brings clarity. God can open our eyes to see and to understand better and to know that we will have that confidence in Him and that hope so just lift up your voice and just pray father we thank you so much we come before you once again in humility father and we pray that lord you give us insight that you give us spiritual wisdom that lord you give us grace in your way that as we continue to grow in your in the knowledge of you lord that we will understand better we will understand better open our eyes to see all that is around us open our eyes to see all the opportunities around us open our eyes to see all that you're doing around us even in the midst of chaos in the, even in the midst of this situation lord may we see may we understand may we understand better what is going on and may we know what we ought to do in this time makabo shataraba father we thank you 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 for your goodness we thank you for your greatness we thank you we mako shatara balabala baba makabara bashi kabatara balabala babe oh rama shatara balabala baba makabashi kataraba we ask that lord you will help us lord you will help us lord 
any area of our life that we are weak father we pray that you will bring strength lord any challenge we are facing in our homes in our lives in our relationship father we pray for solutions we pray for answers lord you are a prayer answering god and that is why we always come before you with our prayer and that is why we always come before you with our gratitude that is why we always come before you with our thanksgiving Mako Shatara. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That which you did before, you can do it again, and we know you are doing it now. And for that, we are grateful. Mako Shatara, Baba. We have faith in your word. We have faith in your deeds. We have faith in your signs. We have faith in you, O Lord. Mako Shatara, Baba. Ah, Maka Shatara, Bala, Baba. And that is why we call on you. That is why we cry out unto you. That is why we come before you. Mako Shatala. Daily, 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 daily. And today we ask that, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Mako Shataba. That which we need today. That which we need in this season. That which you need in this season. Oh, Makaba Shatarabalababa. Makoshatarabalabalabalabalabababa E mako shatara bala ke yalahi bara bala baba. Oh maka shataba ko shatara ba. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, I pray right now for someone who has just come on or chanced on to this broadcast. I pray that you will speak to them, have a word for them. Let them know that it's going to be all right. I pray that even as they listen to this, may they want to know more of you. May they want to search for you. May they want to come after you. And Lord, I pray that for them that their faith is wavering, I pray that they will have reassurance even as they listen to your word. And them that are going through personal sins and personal challenges, I pray for divine help, Lord. Let the enemy not have control over them, but let the Holy Spirit have control. Help them, help them, Lord. Lord, let them know that you have not condemned them. You are a forgiven Father. You are a merciful Father. And may their faith and their joy be restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, you know I'm always talking about the fact that we, are, we should be growing in our faith and we should be growing spiritually and we should be maturing. But I just want to spend a minute and say that and give a shout out not only to our health workers and to our key workers and you know all those dealing with COVID-19 but I'm sure some of the ladies will agree with me that you know our hairdressers and our you know they are key workers <laughs> this is a season that you you value what they mean isn't it yeah I know I feel your pain you know I feel your pain when this season is over when you next go to the salon please get a piece of chocolate for your hairdresser or your you know your nail person or your barber you know yeah i almost think that it also applies to the men also because you know they are becoming self-qualified barbers and uh, are coming up with you know new hairstyles yeah, so please, if you have seen an amazing hairstyle, you can, you can post it so that we can see. And if you have tried one that didn't work, you know, you know, we are talking about confidence right now. Don't be ashamed. Just, you know, post it. Yeah. Um, there was somebody on the news 
a news presenter, he, 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 he normally gives his news in the night and I think just before he came on, he was trying to groom himself and freshen up and he took his, um, I don't know if his blades or whatever, and managed to make a patch in his hair, you know, but he was confident enough to turn it around for us to see, you see, there is no shame. This is the season we are in, you know, this is your natural look, your best look ever. So embrace it, you know, embrace it. Don't be ashamed of it. This is who you are. You know, we have taken all the things that we used to add. Yeah. And we, we are happy to be who we are. Yeah. Some of us are not posting on Instagram and Facebook again. Yeah. But you see, it's a test. It's a test. I pray that we will try it. Okay. So that was just to encourage somebody who is, you know, struggling with how they're looking. It's okay. It's no big deal. You're still handsome. You're still beautiful. Yeah, your husband loves you just the way you are. Your wife, she loves you. Others may not understand the haircut, but you know, your, your husband and your wife. Look. This is an example of confidence, isn't it? Yeah, because your confidence is in your hairstyle, not in yourself, not in who God has made you. It means that when you have nice hair, you are confident. When you don't have nice hair, you are not confident. That season is gone. Now, whatever we have, you know, we can make self-acclaimed locks, curls, we're flowing with it. It's, it's joyful. So long as we have life, so long as we have breath, so long as we are well, so long as the Lord is still with us. Yeah. The scripture says what? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So even when we look more fearful, we become more wonderful. Amen. I want to continue on confidence. Today I really want to touch on building our confidence. The last time we looked at the fact that there's a certain kind of confidence you don't want to have. And also the fact that you can lose your confidence. You can have a negative confidence. Your confidence can be skewed. You know, we don't want to have that. And I pray that since we had that um, last chat, and if you, went, you haven't listened to it, I encourage you to go and listen to it. I pray that we have taken steps to deal with it, to heal from it to rise above it. We looked at some of the things that, you know, affect our confidence negatively. Abuse, setbacks, you know, when the unexpected happens, when you feel different. I pray that we are receiving wisdom to deal with all these different situations because at one time or the other, we all sort of fall into one. We all have setbacks. Unexpected things happen to all of us. I pray that it doesn't knock us off our faith. It doesn't knock us off our relationship. And um, the few nuggets that we'll look at today, hopefully will help us to build the right confidence. Most things have the left and the right, the positive and the negative, the good and the bad. You know, so, you know, like, uh, one of these days we're going to have a look at it. When we look at something like temptation, we always think of temptation and it's like, oh no, you know. But if you are being tempted right now in this season, you know, you just have this strong temptation that, oh, let me go and deliver these food items to my next door neighbor. It's good. Do you understand? So you almost, always have to look at things, whether is it in the positive or is it in the negative. You know, sometimes maybe you're sitting on the bus with somebody or you're walking somewhere and then you're tempted that you should share the word with somebody or you should pray for somebody it's a good one so it's always it's not always in the negative so confidence also is a good thing when it is right and as a christian you need your confidence you need to have confidence because of your father and because of your source so the first thing we're going to look at today is that our walk with god regulates our confidence and it also helps us to bounce back from lost confidence our work with God regulates our confidence and helps us to bounce back so when I say regulate it means that where the confidence is very low it builds it up where you are going overboard it brings it down you know when you look at Romans 2 let's just get that out of the way you see Paul talking about the 
Pharisees and they were so religious. You, do you understand? I always say this thing, religiosity is not the same as spirituality. You know, they had a certain, even though they were in, they thought they had a relationship with God and it's like, you know, they're on the right path. They had a confidence that was not right. So God will always regulate our confidence. I want to read 2 Corinthians 5. I'm going to read 5 to 10. God himself has prepared for us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. I want to assure you as a child of God, God has prepared you for whatever he has placed before you, wherever you are at, whatever you're doing, God has prepared you for this. And the guarantee is the fact that you have the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, so we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord, for we are for we live by believing and not just by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Hebrews 10, 35 to 38, the Bible says that, do not therefore fling away with away your fearless confidence. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. There is a certain confidence just that, that comes with our faith. It says that for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. For still a little while, a very little while, and the coming one will come and he will not delay, but the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, and holy fervor born of faith and conjoined with it. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Amen. Our confidence is built through the Lord, bringing us a great reward. That's what we just read, that he will bring us a great reward. When we read Hebrews 10, 35, it says that we should not fling away our fearless confidence for it carries with it a great, comp a great comp compensation of reward, of reward, of reward. Our confidence is built through the Lord. And you know, when we read 2 Corinthians 5, it says that desire, the, desire more of the Holy Spirit, you know, because the confidence we have is because the guarantee we have of what we are doing, who we are, is because the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Don't build your confidence on anything carnal. I told you what happened to the Pharisees, you know, because even though they knew God, you know, they they sort of served him and lived from a rather carnal place. Do you understand? From a place of legality rather than spirituality. And in fact, that is what we as Christians must become more and more conscious of. Because sometimes even our confidence in who we are as Christians can come off negatively when it comes from a carnal or a legal place. You want it to come from a spiritual place because when it comes from a place of spirituality, it comes with humility. Do you understand? Being confident doesn't mean you should be proud. Do you understand? It's a fleshy confidence that comes with pride. Do you understand? Yeah, it's a legal. That's why the Pharisees and, you know, and the scholars were so 
proud. They were very confident in who they were. They were very confident that they, they were tithing, they were praying, you know, but it didn't please God. That is not the confidence you want. So what you want to desire to build your confidence up is more of the Holy Spirit. You want to become more sensitive to the voice of God. You want to become more sensitive to the presence of God. You want to become more sensitive to the direction of God so that you know when to stand, you know when to sit, you know when it's necessary to correct, you know when it is just to let it go. You know when you don't need to let people know. You know, you don't need to go. It's not everywhere you go that you need to let people know who you are. You understand? Some of us, we enjoy all our titles. Dr. Mrs., Reverend Mrs., you know, yeah, it's too much. Do you understand? When you get to heaven, they don't call the doctors to the left, you know, the uh, pharmacist to the, the, the lawyer to the, they don't call them. I'm telling you, all those ones will not matter. Do you understand? I am, you know, by the grace of God, I've been serving God for 35 years. It doesn't really matter. Do you understand? Yeah, that is, that is pride operating. Do, do, do you get it? That is pride operating. Yeah. You see, when you, when, you, when you look at Paul, you realize that the more he matured in his faith, the more he became humble. The more he realized that is by the grace of God. The more, because he, he tried to explain to us that, listen, me, I'm chief, oh God. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm there. You know, I used to be, I, I can do big man things. But also he realized that, no, everything I'm doing now is just a privilege that God has given to me. One of the things that this kind of confidence also means is that when you are knocked, when there's a setback, when there's, you know, an issue, when, you know, when things don't go so well, or when the storms come, as Reverend has been teaching us, you realize that it doesn't easily affect your confidence. Because the confidence you have is not what you have done, it's not what you have achieved, it's not what you have become, but it is what Christ has made you. Do you understand? It is what the Spirit of God has formed you into. It is what the hand of God that is upon you is helping you to do or to become. And one thing you know is that that hand never shifts. That Christ is not moved by the storms or situations. And that is why even when there's a setback, when there's a knockdown, when, you know, things are not going to plan or when something happens, your confidence will not easily be crushed. I want us to read Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 12, the Bible says that, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Hebrews 3, 14, the Amplified says, for we have become fellows with Christ the Messiah and share in all he has for us. If only we hold our first newborn confidence and original assured expectation in virtue of which we are believers, firm and unshaken to the end. If only we can hold the fact that, you see, sometimes the good can easily generate the bad and the bad generate the good. What am I talking about? Sometimes we have to be broken to come look chasing after God. Sometimes we have to be in a bad place to want to know and receive from God and get help from there and, you know, hold on to him. But what happens is that that can also bring you to the place where now you're okay, you're stronger, and then you let go of what actually took you there. And so the scripture is encouraging us that if only we can hold on to the first newborn, to that original grace, that original help we had, which was in Christ, the one that originally assured us, not who we are now, but the way we came from. Do you understand? When we're broken, when we're helpless, when we're challenged, when we're down, the one that brought us is the same one we should hold on to. Do you understand? Never mistake where you are at to be because you are so clever or, you know, because great, you took the great opportunities that came. No. 
you must always realize that it is God who has helped that. Proverbs 3, the Bible says in 23, then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and sleep will be sweet. See, the difference between somebody whose confidence is in God and through God is that even when things don't look so good, they still have that grace to be able to sleep, to, sleep, to be able to rest, to be able to lie down and not be afraid. Verse 25 says that, Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked. When it comes... For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. When God builds your confidence up and gives you that grace to stand still, it doesn't mean you should stop being good to people, being nice, you're helping people. When it is in your power to help, help. When you can do good to others, do it. Don't look down upon them because maybe they are not standing as tall as you. They, you know, maybe, you know, a few things have been crashed in their life or their situation is not like yours. Or, you know, they, don't, they haven't gathered all that you have gathered. When now you have that authority and you have that, you know, ability, make sure that you will do it. The next thing about this confidence is that it helps you become a soul winner. It helps you become a soul winner. When you really want to win souls for Christ, you need that kind of confidence from God. Acts 28, 31, the Bible says, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Especially when you're in certain parts of the world, you need a certain confidence to even approach somebody to share the love of Christ with them, to encourage them, you know, to even offer a prayer. You need that confidence that comes from God. The last thing I want to give us is that God builds that confidence in us by also bringing around us people, faithful people, who will help us build that confidence. Faithful people who also help us build that confidence. Galatians 5, the Bible says from verse 7 to 10, You run well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lamp. But I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. What I defined it, I said, faithful people. The Bible says that confidence in an unfaithful man is like a foot out of joint. Proverbs 25, 19. Yeah, or a broken tooth. So it's not, it's where, the, where you are getting your confidence from when it comes to men, it's very important because the scripture says that the arm of flesh will fail you. Do you understand? But at the same time, God also brings people our way who, just as people use their mouth to reduce our confidence, that same mouth can encourage us and help build our confidence back. Yeah, for those of us who have children, you can build the confidence of your children. Don't turn them into braggarts and whatever, but you can build their confidence in terms of school work, relationship, you know, social, uh, social integration. You can build their confidence up. If you have daughters, you know, fathers, tell your daughters how beautiful they are. Do you understand how nice they are? It builds their confidence so that a strange man doesn't come and lie to them or doesn't come and build a negative confidence in them. If we do it, wives, build your husband's confidence. You should be able to look at your husband and tell him, you are the strongest man I know. Yeah. You are the best man I know. Yeah. If I had to marry again, I'm marrying you. If I came back onto the earth, I'm looking for you. 
you understand? When you tell your husband that he's the strongest man, even if he's a weak man, you will start carrying big things. <laughs> you will be surprised. Yeah, if you tell, if you keep, if you, you can build confidence in your, heart, in your spouse, if you tell your wife, do you understand, that you are the most beautiful woman. In fact, when she has had a baby and you, you look at her, you'll be like, you know, even your after baby looks are amazing. Yeah, that is what will help her even to, you know, take care of herself. Yeah, but if you look at her and you're like, please, 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 cover yourself, cover yourself. You know, yeah. you make her become more intimidated. Yeah. That is why you must surround yourself with the right people. That is why you must find yourself at the right place. Yeah. One of the main forms of abuse, even by leaders, is to make people feel insecure. It's to make people feel you are going for a job interview, you didn't call me to pray for you, and you expect that you'll get a job. I mean, what kind of thing is that? Do you understand? You should be able to let people have, build people up in their confidence. That listen, when you pray, God hears you. When you pray, God hears you. I'll pray with you, but your prayer also goes up. Do, do, do you understand? Yeah. When somebody wants to try something, go for a job, start a business, encourage them. You know, when somebody's struggling in their faith, maybe they backslide, they step back a bit, encourage them. Even where your testimony can help them share the testimony. What a blessing it is. I pray. I pray that all those who are listening to me now, may we help others build their confidence. And where we ourselves need that, may the Spirit of God and the Word of God help you to build your confidence. Trust me, the Lord has you covered. The Lord has you covered. It may not even look like it. I don't care what you've been told, the Lord has you covered. The Lord wants you standing tall. The Lord wants you succeeding. The Lord wants you coming up. Yeah. All you need to do is focus on Him. Walk in His will. Seek His will. And whatever you do, make sure that whatever you are doing, it brings glory to God. Don't take the glory for yourself. I want to declare Psalm 27 over you. In fact, I want all of us to read it. I'm going to read from the NLT. I'm reading Psalm 27. I'm going to read verse 1 to 6. It's our declaration for all of us. So let's go. Let's say it together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident in you. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfection and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there. He will conceal me there. When troubles come, he will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices and shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. In Jesus' name. Amen. May this be your confession and may this be your life and may this word come to pass in your life. Father, I thank you today. I pray for everyone listening now that you will help us to rebuild our confidence in you. You will help us to stay focused on you. And where our confidence has been crushed, Father, I pray that you will heal and restore. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord continue to favor you. And may you enjoy all the fruits of your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you 
and see you again. And remember to help somebody else build up their confidence.